It's the most expensive science probe ever built, costing upwards of $10 billion and took decades to get into space. But the hand-wringing anxiety for NASA and the other space agencies is far from over. The James Webb Space Telescope launched beautifully on Christmas morning, taking admirers the world over with it on a spectacular journey to a spot called L2. From there, it becomes humanity's time machine, peering back to the earliest epoch of history when our universe was in its most embryonic stages. Entire careers of so many dedicated workers around the globe have been spent to see this mission through. But for this dream to be realized, so much must go right out in the dark and cold reaches of space. And so many things can derail this historic mission that is captivating the world. Welcome to Fact Nominal. Today, we'll look at what's on Webb's horizon in the coming days and weeks and the key moments that must go as planned and practiced. What could possibly go wrong, you ask? Plenty. And then some. Mike Menzel, Webb Lead Mission System Engineer for NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center (GSFC) in Maryland, had this to say during a November news briefing. There are 344 single point of failure items on average. Approximately 80% of those are associated with the deployment. It's hard to avoid when you have a release mechanism. It's hard to put full redundancy into that. Crystal Puga, Webb Spacecraft Systems Engineer for Northrop Grumman, noted at the same event that Webb's 144 release mechanisms all must work perfectly. Menzel said the Webb team decreased the number of release mechanisms and thus single points of failure as much as possible and conducted extra inspections and tests on all that remained. Remember, this system must operate at a few degrees above absolute zero, protected by five membranes the thickness of a human hair, combined into a tennis court-sized kite-shaped sunshade. So the space origami that is Webb is now unfolding. This, Menzel added, is hands down the most complicated space activity we've ever done. By the end of the James Webb Space Telescope's first week in space, the solar array was successfully deployed. Two trajectory-correcting thruster firings were executed flawlessly. A high-gain antenna was unlimbered and pointed at Earth, and the forward and aft pallets holding the sunshade membranes were rotated into position. Webb's primary mirror and instruments were lifted about 1.2 meters or 4 feet above the folded sunshade to allow them to cool. New Year's Eve saw two telescoping booms pull the capped on membranes into their kite-like shape. On Monday, January 3rd, the one deployment that is time critical entered its final phase, the deployment of Webb's sunshield. And it was delayed two days. Why? Engineers took a much-needed break on New Year's Day and then spent Sunday, January 2nd, working through what are described as minor issues. Of course, with the scientific world enduring what NASA has called 29 days on the edge, everything is tension and nothing qualifies as minor. First, the space agency decided to spend Sunday, Webb's ninth day in space, analyzing how the power subsystem is operating now that several of the major deployments are complete. Bill Ox, Web Project Manager at NASA's GSFC, said in a statement Sunday, Nothing we can learn from simulations on the ground is as good as analyzing the observatory when it's up and running. Now is the time to take the opportunity to learn everything we can about its baseline operations. So, what were the two minor issues? The first was the set of motors for sunshield tensioning being slightly warmer than expected due to sunlight shining on them, even though they were well within the operating margin. Engineers reoriented Webb to shade the motors more and their temperature dropped. Secondly, flight controllers in Maryland reset the solar panel to draw more power after finding a preset max duty cycle in an array regulator module was limiting power needed by Webb. In the words of Amy Lowe, a lead engineer for Northrop Grumman, everything is hunky-dory. Now, what's next? Did someone mention tension? The next step for NASA is tensioning the five sunshade layers. Remember those 344 single-point failures possible? Those non-redundant systems required for deployments that each must work for web to function? With no backups? NASA says the sunshield has up to 140 release mechanisms, 400 pulleys, 70 hinge assemblies, and 90 cables. Every single release device is a single point of failure. 
For Webb's mirrors and instruments to register infrared traces of the first stars and galaxies in the universe, they must be nearly 400 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Each of the super-thin layers must be pulled tight by motor-driven cables using an array of pulleys, all while keeping each layer separate to allow heat to dissipate. Why not just one thick sunshield layer? Because each successive layer is cooler than the one below. The heat radiates in the separation between the layers and the vacuum in between works as an insulator. One large sunshield would directly conduct heat from the bottom to the top. The sunshield must be fully tensioned before Webb's secondary mirror is deployed, followed by the side wings of the primary mirror. Lee Feinberg, optical telescope element manager for Webb at GSFC says, the sun shield itself is, of all our deployments, that's the one that is the most complex. It has the most moving parts. While the tensioning is ongoing at this time, the sun shield has been successfully deployed. Mission team members tweeted on Webb's account, shine bright like a diamond. With the successful deployment of our right sun shield mid-boom, or arm, Webb's sun shield now has taken on its diamond shape in space. Now comes more work that's never been done before using instruments and procedures that had to be invented just for this purpose. The primary mirror will be assembled from 18 smaller gold-plated hexagonal mirrors made of beryllium that will span over 6.5 meters or 21 feet across. Each smaller mirror weighs approximately 20 kilograms, which is 46 pounds. To see what astronomers hope to see, which is our universe almost 14 billion years ago. These complex mirrors must assemble far beyond the moon with no chance of engineers swinging by to adjust. The spacecraft's internal system will be commanded to fully extend and latch the iconic primary mirror, which was done in practice in Webb's testing room in Redondo Beach, California, seven months before the Christmas launch. The command in May came after acoustic and sign vibration testing in October 2020 to simulate what Webb will experience on launch day and while in space. Let's get back to the gold-plated hexagonal mirrors, all 18 of them. While unfolding the space origami is clearly a major step for NASA, engineers will also hold their breaths as Webb's mirrors are slowly and carefully brought into focus. Each segment of the primary and secondary mirrors is moved by actuators, tiny mechanical motors, of which six are attached to each mirror piece. Mirror deployment is expected within two weeks of launch. Remember, there are no second chances to get this right. Getting nervous yet? Once the telescope cools in the shade of the deployed sunshield, Warm electronics will be turned on and flight software initialized. When Webb's mirrors are fully deployed, there will be many team members exhaling with a sigh of relief. However, a different group of scientists, engineers, designers, and instrument builders will collectively inhale and hold their breath through the next several weeks. All of Webb's instruments will be tested and calibrated in a process that will take months. At about 29 days, there will be one final thruster burn and JWST will come to its position at Lagrange Point 2 or L2. At about 33 days after launch, the complex instrumentation will be turned on and operated. The first NERCAM image will be made of a crowded group of stars to see that light is getting through the telescope and into the instruments. The image will not be focused as the mirror fine-tuning described earlier will not have been done but NASA will know the process is working. Around the 44-day mark, the intricate work of adjusting the primary mirror segments begins with identifying each segment with its image of a star in the camera. The third month after launch for the James Webb Space Telescope is also critical to its success. It is then that engineers will align the gold-plated primary mirror segments to work together as a single optical surface, all 18 of them. Lee Feinberg, Webb Optical Telescope Element Manager at NASA Goddard, explains the incredible technical features that engineers and scientists working on the telescope literally had to invent themselves. Aligning the primary mirror segments as though they are a single large mirror means each mirror is aligned to one ten thousandth the thickness of a human hair. The mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, will also be turned on at this time and astronomers expect to be able to take the first science-quality images after 90 days. 
Then comes weeks of testing and calibration of instrumentation, and with any luck, routine science operations by late June. Make that lots of luck. Though it's unlikely to ever be used, NASA included something on JWST just in case the possibility opens for a tune-up or to add more propellant. Stickers on the back of the spacecraft serve as targets for possible robotic visitors in the future. They are reference points to tell the visiting craft where to attach to JWST. Likely? No. A fascinating possibility? Absolutely. So, what do you think about Webb and the many tense weeks coming for astronomers and engineers? Is the payoff worth all the tension and hand-wringing as this technological marvel opens the doors of the universe for humanity? Tell us in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching Factnominal.